Hi there. In this video, I'm going to be talking about how issues of serial correlation can cause problems with inference in your sort of practical application of econometrics. Well, let's say we were interested in finding out how classroom size affected the test score of an individual I in, let's say, classroom G. And we were saying that that depends on basically the classroom size. So we expect beta here to be less than zero. So as the classroom size increases, the sort of average level of test score for an individual in that class decreases. But classroom size doesn't determine how well a individual does uh, overall. There are also a whole host of other individual and classroom specific factors. And we spoke about how before this error here might be composed of some sort of classroom specific factors, so up, which are other than the classroom size. So that could be things like um, the teacher quality or the school quality, um, as well as a whole host of individual specific factors, which I'm calling eta i in this notation. Well, let's say that we have a whole host of data on test scores of individuals i in a whole range of classes g. Um, and we put this into our sort of program. So perhaps we put it into Stata or we put it into eViews or R or SPSS, um, etc. So, and we get a model which looks something like this. So perhaps it outputs a value of beta, which is minus 10. So for every one unit increase in um, the classroom size, there is a corresponding 10 unit decrease in the test scores on average of an individual within that class size. And perhaps um, our model will also output in sort of Stata or eViews, it will give us some estimate of our standard error in beta. So perhaps our estimate of our standard error in beta is 1.5. Well, we could use this, uh, and we're gonna talk about in the future, to form thing, uh, well, statistics which we can use for inference. So that could be a t-statistic, or if there are multiple coefficients, that could be some sort of F statistics, which we can then use for inference in the population. Well, what's the problem with doing this if we just apply sort of general models in Stata or eViews? Well, in coming up with an estimate of the standard error in beta, basically what Stata and eViews assume is that the Gauss-Markov assumptions are true. Yeah, so specifically here, they assume in coming up with this estimate of um, 1.5, the error in beta, that there is no serial correlation. And we've spoken in the previous video about how this assumption of no serial correlation is likely going to be untrue in the case of grouping or clustering in my errors. So what's the problem here? Well, in reality, when I have this sort of group structure of errors, my true standard error in beta is likely to be anywhere up to sort of, well, it can, it can be a, a significantly more than the error which is outputted if we assume that the Gauss-Markov assumptions are true. So perhaps the true standard error is more like five. So we're that much less certain, essentially, in our estimate of the effect of classroom size on test score than our model, which uh, are statistics which our statistical programs output makes us actually think we are. So in reality, this is a very dangerous thing because if we do not take into account this sort of serial correlation and we do not tell Stata or eViews that we likely have this clustering or, or clustering of errors or we have this sort of serial correlation, if we rely solely on the sort of default outputs of these programs, we can make very misleading inferences about the population. So that's why it is important in Stata and eViews that we use the correct commands to take account of the serial correlation. And in the future, we're going to talk about how we actually go about doing that in these specific programs.